2K crew, what is up? Oh my gosh, today is such a beautiful day. We're recording on Sunday. And for those of you on YouTube, or for those of you that really, you know, this is your first time uh, following us, look who it is. This is not a stranger. I didn't pick him up <clears throat> off the street. This is actually Mr. Kyle 2K's Kaler back in the building. Brother, it's good to have you back. It's good to be back. I mean, it was, we we did what we could. We pushed through, you know, as, as we normally do. We get down and out. We just rub mm -hmm. some dirt on it and keep going. But it's good to have finally have you back in the studio. And for for good reasons, you mm -hmm. know, we we were practicing social distancing, which I hate that word. But we were doing our part and yep. staying safe, which is, which is the, the best thing. Because I have a feeling if either one of us have gotten sick, we probably wouldn't have had shows. Mm -hmm. So we, we got to do what we got to do. And we're safe. Families are safe. So, again, it's good to have you back. Uh, studio looks kind of different. What do you think? I like it. I like uh, it a lot. Well, cool, 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 man. Yeah, today was an absolute gorgeous day. We're recording on Sunday. And uh, before we jump into everything, you know, all things 2Ks, um, big big shout out to Drop Anchor. You know, they are continue to be our, being our sponsor and look them up on Facebook, uh, Drop Anchor Tavern in Marcellus. So if you're in, in and around Marcellus, go ahead and give them a call. I believe they're opening up Friday. Mm -hmm. I believe that's the big kind of, I guess it really wouldn't be big if it's a soft opening, but uh, they are uh, going to start serving dinner in, in house mm -hmm. and serving drinks and stuff. They're still, still doing carry out orders for those of you that uh, don't want to partake quite like that yet. But give them a call, 269-646-2525. Tell them Turbo and 2K sent you. So 2Ks, what did you do with this amazing day? I mean, you could have done anything outside, and I'd, I'd be super jealous. Yeah, well, that's pretty much what we did. We were outside <laughs> all day um, with the family, uh, hanging out at the pool, <clears throat> uh, drinking some beers. Some adult bevos, if you will. Uh, but, that, yeah, that's pretty much it. I mean, yeah, it was a perfect day outside. Not too hot, um, not too cold. The pool's perfect. Mm -hmm. Uh, yeah, it was nice to be out. It was hard to uh, pack everything in, and, and, <laughs> and you know, <clears throat> wanted to keep wanted to keep drinking beer. They were going down pretty easy today, but mm -hmm. also got to be back to work tomorrow, so <laughs> it's probably a good thing. And you had two K crew for for what you can see in the studio. There's probably ninety percent of my house back there that's still under renovation. So two Ks was getting to having some sun and fun, and I'm sitting here getting drenched in <laughs> insulation. So I, 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 yes, I am jealous of you. Yes, I am. <laughs> Well, 2Ks, let's, let's, again, there's not really a whole lot to talk about sports-wise, but I think the ball is starting to roll the way that uh, we will be getting some, some at least prominent sports. You know, I, I refuse to talk about cornhole on, uh, <laughs> on, on, on the show, even though as much as I, I, I thoroughly enjoy, I like to call it bags because the cornhole makes, makes me feel uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'll, I'll just throw that out there. But, yeah, I'm not, I'm not going to get down on that, but... <laughs> If you rewind two weeks ago, we kind of did our, and uh, for, for those of you on, on YouTube, I'll post the link right there. Uh, we, we, we had our kind of our sports coming back show. And I think we've, we kind of nailed the, the NBA one and the NHL one. Mm -hmm. Baseball, we'll, we'll, we'll get into that later on in the show. But it looks like that the basketball season is going to go forward. Yep. And what was it, July 19th? July 31st. 31st, yep. okay. So, yeah, there, which to me seems like a, long ways away mm -hmm. i mean it i want to say when i was watching uh one of the one of the shows earlier this week they said that you know training camp for them is like three weeks mm -hmm. two weeks and then maybe some little fill-in games so i mean it, it seems to me like you would start the season up a little bit quicker than that mm -hmm. but that's that's neither here nor there at least it's a step in the right direction yeah. and i gotta imagine there's probably you know quite a bit of preparation that goes into getting everything you know Getting everything ready to bring because everybody's going to be playing at the same site, right? And there in Orlando is where it's. I believe there's two or three courts that they're playing. Yes, yeah, yep. but it's it's all, all, all within right there. The, the, the wide wide world of sports of yep. Disney. Yep. yep. So I'm sure that they got a you know a lot of preparation goes into it. Obviously, with everything going on, there's going to be a lot of eyes and spotlight on them. Mm -hmm. So they have to do everything the right way, taking the time, and then also it gives these players a chance to you know knock some rust off. I mean, oh, I'm yeah. sure that they've still been working out a little bit, but. You know, to be able to get these teams back together and practicing and, and actually doing some live, you know, action with the whole team there, I think, mm -hmm. you know, giving them a month gives us a better chance of seeing, you know, maybe the best product when they start up instead of, you know, 10, 15 tune-up games before right. you get, really get the good thing. And then you, I, one, one part that I, I kind of forgot to mention when we started this was there's a 14-day quarantine for the, the international players mm -hmm. coming back over here. Mm -hmm. 
So you kind of have to factor that in too, yep. I guess. So if you, if you, were, you really couldn't get shit started right now mm-hmm. and still have, you know, some of the biggest names like Luca, Giannis, mm-hmm. you know, some of the, some of those cats are at home. Mm-hmm. They're not they're not in the states. Mm-hmm. They're at home, so they'd have to come back over, get the get get through their quarantine before they can even join the team. Yep. So maybe it does make a little bit more sense with that point. But um, there some of the weird things that have, they've, they've been talking about is for like quote unquote home home court advantage. Um, actually bringing in the court from your home stadium, which I think is weird. Um, could you imagine being one of the people that have to change that in and out? Because, <laughs> I mean, you, they're, they're going to run three and four games a day. Yeah, oh yeah. Like, fuck, again? <laughs> this is retarded. And then I, I can only imagine the durability of something like that not lasting up mm-hmm. for as long as it should mm-hmm. be when it's being replaced three mm-hmm. and four times a day. Mm-hmm. And... I can't remember, I can't remember who, who I was listening to or watching, but they were like, you know, oh, it's Dan Patrick. And, you know, because Dan considers himself quite quite the shooter. Mm-hmm. And he says that the, the floor really doesn't matter when it comes to the home home court advantage. It's the backdrop behind the basket. Mm-hmm. You know, if, if you have, you know, there's a 10 foot between the wall and the hoop. Mm-hmm is a lot different than 15 feet oh, yeah. or 20 feet. Absolutely. It, especially with the glass backboards, you know, it messes with your, with your depth perception, you know, and you're not quite as, mm-hmm. quite as attuned to it. He's like, I, I, I can understand that. Um, another one is they were talking about giving one player an extra foul, which I was like, I, yeah, I don't really understand that one. No. Like why? Yeah. I mean, it, it, I, I, I could understand going back. Like, you know, we just got through the, uh, the Michael Jordan documentary. Mm-hmm. If you would have gave Lambeer or Rodman an extra foul, <laughs> then yeah, I mean that 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 would something be really advantageous. They uh-huh. can just go out and hack the shit out mm-hmm. of people. Or speaking of hacking, the the, the whole hackashack defense when that was in there. Well, yeah, mm-hmm. you could just have a dude on the bench be like, all right, motherfucker, you got the seven <laughs> fouls. Go foul Shaq <laughs> seven times in a row, and then you're done. But for this day and age, you really don't see that, mm-hmm. and, and I don't see that as being and. I understand they're trying to make it as normal as possible. Mm-hmm. I get that, and I get there. There has to be a lot of creative stuff going into this because, like you know, like we've we've, we've said on many times, there's no rule book. There's mm-hmm. no you know, how how to guide on how to mm-hmm. do this. So we're all kind of flying by the seat of our pants. And you know, I, I think a lot of it is you know, you look at the Korean league, the Korean baseball league. Now, I think the last couple of weeks they've actually had games. Granted, it was the seventh, eighth, and ninth inning. But they, the games weren't ending until eight thirty, so mm-hmm. I was I was up getting getting around for work and watching some of them, and they have like stuffed animals behind home plate to kind of see, which is better than sex dolls, I guess. <laughs> I guess yeah, it, it's a little bit more family friendly, mm-hmm. friendly viewing at that point. But it's like, man, it it still seems kind of gimmicky. It does, it and I, I I'll say this flat out. If this is becoming the quote unquote new norm, we might have to change the podcast to <laughs> something, you know, we'll review beer or something mm-hmm. because this, if, if you take baseball away from me, that's like taking half mm-hmm. of my heart. Mm-hmm. I'm sorry. Yeah. Now, granted, I have a feeling we'll get back to where everything was, but yeah. it, it's, it's going to take time. I yeah. understand that. But so what, what are your thoughts on the NBA? I know there's kind of a weird, you know, they're taking what the top 22 teams mm-hmm. And I, I believe that was just top 22 teams record-wise. Mm-hmm. And there was uh, Portland, I think, was one of the teams that did qualify that said, no, nah, we're good, mm-hmm. we're good. And Damian Lillard came out and said, or already said that at the beginning. He's like, if you're not going to bring us back to we have an actual chance at winning something, then fuck you. Mm-hmm. I don't blame him. I'd, I'd be the same way. Mm-hmm. But mm-hmm. what what are your takes uh, as far as the, the timing, all, all the other stuff, and... Who's your top team? Who, who, who are you looking to take it on? Well, I mean, to get started with it, to me, the, the NBA, I mean, as a whole, as far as all these sports that are uh, could or would be going on, you know, if if it wasn't for the, you know, the corona, the NBA has done the best. Mm-hmm. You know, and, and, and it, maybe the hot, maybe NHL has done a really good job. I don't really follow that, so I couldn't tell you. I know that they're, they are also getting ready to start back up mm-hmm. by the sounds of it, but I don't know a lot of the details of it, but... You know, I look at what the NBA has going, and then I kind of compare them to like where the MLB stands, and it's just that what it, what it tells me is the players and the owners in the NBA are so 
It's I think it's I think it's very tight, and I think we've seen that as this is, as this is all rolled out, how tight they are, mm-hmm. and you know it didn't take them very long at all to come up with an agreement. No, to where baseball. The players and the owners are so far apart that I still I'm I'm holding at my ground what I said three four weeks ago. I don't think it's happening. Mm-hmm. I don't think there's a season happening, and it breaks my heart to say that because I want there to be a season, but they are so far away from from coming to any kind of an agreement on it that I just don't do not see it happening at all. But uh, so so what the, what the NBA is doing, I like it. I think it's I think they're starting at a perfect time. They're going to obviously move next season start time. And I think that probably the NBA start time needs to always be, you know, pushed back further yeah. than what it is. Because yeah, they're, they're looking at, what, a December 1st yeah, start time yep, for 21-22. Yep. Yeah. And whereas they had talked about doing it right at, like, to have opening weekend on on Christmas, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. which I can see why they're not going to do that because you want the build up, you want the hype, and then have it crescendo kind of yes. at the or peak. Yep. Um, when it does come to Christmas, because that, that, that's when you have the most eyes on mm-hmm. you. Because mm-hmm. I mean, that's and it's been that way for years. Mm-hmm. You know, everyone's at home. It's kind of like uh, Thanksgiving and football. You know, it's kind of one of those things that goes hand in hand. So. And, and and even looking at the you know the big picture and all this, I would not be upset if we went if the NBA goes from an eighty two game season to maybe a sixty five game season mm-hmm. and maybe cut fifteen or so games out. And uh, you know, you're always talk, you're always hearing about you know people, especially some of the old school players complaining about you know how guys like LeBron or guys like Kawhi or you know taking games off in the middle of a week you know maybe when they have a, a back-to-back set or something like that you might see someone like that take a day off and I know that that pisses a lot of the mm-hmm. you know the old time and the old timers that are watching and it pisses them off and even me it pisses me off too I, I could not imagine you know loading my family up and getting you know tickets to a game and then I get there and I want to watch LeBron play all right and I get there and LeBron's not not even in he's in street clothes yeah so yeah you know, maybe if you push that back to where you're only playing 65 games in a season or somewhere in that ballpark, maybe you that takes away from these players, you know, not playing so many back-to-back nights. And mm-hmm. so, th- therefore, they're playing every single night. So, to me, I, I like I like where the NBA is going with this. I, 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 I'm, I'm ex- I think may- maybe some of it is I just want to watch anything. You know, right. I think everybody knows I'm not a huge NBA fan, but... Me either. Damn, I just want to watch some sports. Some Something good, you know? Something that's relevant. Yes. I mean, we can say, remember watching old Ali, mm-hmm. uh, you know, fights, which I, I, I could watch Ali fight all day. That I man was, was an artist. Mm-hmm. I just want something relevant. I want something that means something. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I, I'm like you. I'm not an NBA guy. Do I follow certain players? Sure, mm-hmm. sure. Mm-hmm. But what what I think is that they're and the only thing that frustrates me about this whole thing is whoever wins the title this year is going to be, you know, the quarantine team. Yeah. Which it's not their fault. No. And if you know, even Caesar Sportsbook came out and said that the Lakers are favored mm-hmm. very closely by the Bucks, yeah. which is the, they're the top two teams in the yep. league. And it, you know, like we talked about before, if you're LeBron, you want this season to keep going mm-hmm. because ultimately your window's closing, bro. Mm-hmm. You're getting older, mm-hmm. whereas Giannis is just coming up. AD's probably close to his prime. Mm-hmm. I, I think he's still got quite a few good years, but oh, yeah. but LeBron's on. It's, it, maybe it's, he's maybe he's at his yeah. peak right now, and then he's going to slowly. Mm-hmm. Some people say he's lost a step. I don't see it, mm-hmm. but. He's not going to be playing the, at this level for that much longer. And fuck yes, you don't want to waste a season. Mm-hmm. And you know, get, get, getting back to the hockey part, they're they're doing strictly playoffs. Mm-hmm. The first round is the best of five. The rest are best of sevens. And they're doing it at two separate sites. Mm-hmm. So I think like the east and the, mm-hmm. the east has one site, the west has one site. I believe that's how, that's how it is. But theirs is going to start start uh, very shortly, just, just like the NBA's. But baseball, yeah, that. I'm to the point now. I would much rather not have it at all than have a fifty mm. fifty game season. And you know, you just said, you just said it before that you know talking about you know it's always going to be the, the the Corona team you know that won that won this. And I don't think that that's really going to be the picture with the NBA. We have to remember they already played well over half the season. If LeBron wins it, he, he's going to be the quarantine team. Yeah, just yeah, because it's LeBron. Because it's LeBron. If it's Giannis. Yes, it, it doesn't matter. That, yeah. or, or if it's uh, you know Kawhi in the clip show, it's not going to matter. Yeah. It's only going to matter if LeBron wins. Yeah, it. and I don't think that that's fair to say because, like I said, they've they've already they had already played well over half the season. Um, I think that you know the legit teams that had a sh- that you know have a chance at winning it 
had already sh- have already proven themselves. I don't think there was any there wasn't going to be any surprises. I mean, I think we already knew that you know it's going to be one of these five six teams. There's not mm-hmm. going to be a team that comes out of nowhere or anything like that. So I really can't you know think that way for the NBA, but for the for Major League Baseball who hadn't started the season yet, mm-hmm. and then you play a shortened season, whether it's 50 games, whether it's you know. I know that at the first um, what they what they were talking about in the very beginning was like an eighty two game season, mm-hmm. and even that, you know, eighty two games into the season, there's a lot of teams that really haven't you know hit their you know their best baseball yet. I mean, I think that giving given eighty two games, you can kind of get a pretty good picture of you know what wow. teams are are for real and what teams are going to be there. But who the fuck would have said the Na- Washington Nationals were going to be a World Series team eighty two games in the last season? I was just going to say that I, I would really like to see what the Nats schedule or the Nats record was at mm-hmm. after eighty two games, because Thugalicious is outside. I'm not <laughs> sure if you guys can hear that, but I've got one of the coolest fucking neighbors on the planet, obviously. <laughs> but uh, and I think he's parked right outside my fucking window. And uh, uh-huh. yep, there he goes. Give her hell. Yeah, cool Mo D right there. <laughs> Um, I, I'm, I'm sure he'll be at, uh, you know, just just uh, north on Davis Street signing autographs for anyone that wants to uh, partake. But, uh, but yeah, no, the I, I would like to see what the Nats, because there was that comparison. And, you know, I can't remember what the date was that the Nats and the Tigers had the very had, had the same exact record. Mm-hmm. I, I can't remember. I, I want to say it was less than 82 games. Mm-hmm. Cause I want to say it was after like after in May maybe. Mm-hmm. Um, and 82 was kind of like that, you know, right around the All-Star break where the Nats had kind of started to put shit together and started. But it, I guarantee if you would have pulled anyone that's not a Nat fan mm-hmm. who's going to win the World Series, no one would have said the Nats. So 82, I can kind of kind of wrap my head around. Um, me and Thugalicious would probably coming, want like coming the, back. Uh, yeah, he's, he's, he's doing hot laps, bro. Hot labs up and down Davis Street. You didn't know that's the cool thing to do now? A few, a few weeks ago, there's a tractor. Now we got, you know, big, big, big base baby out here. Um, but no, I, 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 much, I would much rather see the 102 that, mm. the, that, that the players proposed. Mm. However, the, what, what came with the players' proposition is a lot of other things that I think that the, the ownerships really didn't want to wrap their head around. Uh, mostly pay. Mm-hmm. Now, I, I understand that a lot of... A lot of the revenue that these baseball teams make is from concessions and mm-hmm. ticket sales. I get that. But there is, especially the big market teams, you're making a lot of your fucking money off TV. Mm-hmm. Do you not think TV ratings are going to be off the fucking hook because people want to watch baseball? People want to wa- You don't hear these labor things talking about the, the with the mm-hmm. NBA or the NHL. Well, I'm, I'm not really sure if the NHL players get paid. I'm just kidding. Mm-hmm. But the, the, the mm-hmm. pay is not nearly the mm-hmm. same. The NBA players aren't aren't pitching a fit. The NBA owners aren't pitching a fit. Why is it with baseball? And I understand, you know, like when Blake Snell came out and said, "I want my money." I get that. I get that. Now, there even Scott Boris came out and said, you know, he was urging the players, "Do not bail out the owners." The owners are billionaires with a B. These guys are millionaires with an M. There's a, there's quite a big difference. Mm-hmm. Now you you're trying to tell me. The owner of the Tigers does not get a lot of money from Fox Sports Detroit to put all of his fucking games on there. No. You can't pay your payroll with that. Mm-hmm. Are you kidding me? Mm-hmm. E- even a prorated, which the players have agreed to a prorated mm-hmm. salary, but nothing, nothing. I, I, they've helped the owners out. I get mm-hmm. that. And w- it being the, you know, the labor union that they are, they they could have not taken a pay cut. Period. Mm-hmm. And. So I I, just, I can't I, I'm trying to find a you know, reason in my mind and try to wrap this wrap my head around this is why is this why is baseball so different from any other sport? Mm-hmm. NBA gets money from TNT, TBS, and I'm sure they're they're locals. You know, mm-hmm. like Fox Sports Detroit does with the Pistons. If anyone still watches the Pistons, <laughs> but there has there, I, I yes, a lot of your money comes from the gate and what people spend in the stadium. I get that. But you're trying to tell me as an as a major league team owner, you couldn't just one year or even half a year. We're getting close to that half a year period now. That the TV revenue would not support you. Mm-hmm. That, that, that which I'm not an owner. I've never claimed to be one. I don't play one on TV. But it would seem to think that yes, and even if it didn't, 
if you took a loss for the you know a, a, a loss for this year when you open those gates yeah. back up next year you know how fucking flooded mm-hmm. you're going mm-hmm. to be and that's the part i don't get yeah and I, I wish, you know, we I, we had a an economist on our staff that they, they could help us out or a mm-hmm. business major on our staff. Be like, no, Turb, this is why it's this, this is why it's that. But, you know, we, it's, it's Turbo and 2K's budget, folks. I'm sorry. <laughs> you know, we, we've got a senior golf analyst, which we luckily haven't paid because we haven't had any golf yet. <laughs> well, we did. But um, and then our uh, senior NBA analyst uh, has canceled on us like four times in a mm-hmm. row. So we kind of stopped calling him. So those are our two analysts. We we don't we, we don't have uh, you know the you know the the budget for an, a, any more analysts. Mm. So two Ks and I have to share hats. Mm. So, <laughs> but no, I think at the end of the day, I think you know you just said it. I think there's a lot of with and this is me talking about Major League Baseball. I think with the owners, there's a lot of greediness there. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think, but but at the same time. The ones that are going to take all the heat on this are going to be the players because that's just oh, yeah. that's how it always works out. Mm-hmm. And you know, I think a vast majority of these players want to play, regardless. Yeah. I don't. I think there's a lot. Most of them probably don't even care about the money at this point. They just want to play. Mm-hmm. But then there's those. Then there's the ones that you know do want the money. And hey, I'm not arguing with them one bit. They deserve no. the money. All these guys deserve the money. But I just don't. I think they're so far apart. On coming to any type of an agreement, and we're just—I mean, how much longer can we do this? We can't because the thing is, with you can start these other sports up, and I think you can, you can start and maybe give them a week, week and a half, and they're going. With baseball, you have to go through—I think another—you have to go a month, Mm -hmm. uh, just getting these, you know, going through the spring training, getting these players back out there and playing, especially the pitchers. Mm -hmm. You know, you—it takes time to amp up these pitchers to where they can throw, you know, seven to eight innings games and go a hundred pitches. They're not, you can't just walk out there and throw 100 pitches. I mean, you can do it, mm-hmm. but the longevity of it is not going to last. No. You're not going to be able to last no. through a season and into the playoffs when everybody wants to watch the best baseball. Mm-hmm. Your pitches are going to be exhausted. So mm-hmm. you have to have, I think, that month just to just of spring training mm-hmm. before you can even get into any baseball games that are meaningful. So I'm looking at it. I'm looking at the big picture, and I just don't think that there's enough time, especially how far away they are right now i just don't see it happening and i think that they're just going to sit here and keep on spinning the wheels and it's just not going to happen so that's what that 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 upsets me i'm getting back to nba um i know because i'm getting tired of talking about the fucking (laughs) i just want them to play Mm -hmm. but uh getting back to the nba as far as my you know favorite teams um i mean i think you got obvious picks you got to go with the lakers and bucks but one thing that's kind of has me thinking, you know, is with Brooklyn, is Kevin Durant, is he ready? To, I mean, he's got to be getting close. Oh, Kyrie Irving, too. Yeah. So so if both of them, I mean, I I, I have to imagine that, that, you know, especially Durant is probably close. And, you know, you're starting back over. I know, and Brooklyn's right there. And, mm-hmm. you know, and they can make a run and get, and get themselves, you know, a decent seat in the playoffs, especially with those two guys. Look out. I mean, look look out if, if Durant's ready to go. But if you're Durant, do you do you risk coming back too early for a shortened season? I mean that. No, I I don't personally. I don't think I would do that because I don't think even with him, I don't think that they're ready to take no. on no. Milwaukee in the East. Now next year with the whole season, if both him and Kyrie are healthy mm-hmm. all year, that is a and very scary another off season to make make some splashes. Yes. You know, because yeah, they they still there's cap space there to, to you know to bring on another. Mm-hmm. So if they can make another splash, bring somebody else in, I think it's I think I think the smarter move is for Durant to you yeah. know to wait. But at the same time, Kevin Durant's a you know he's a professional athlete, one of the best in the game, mm-hmm. one of the best athletes in the world. He's ready. He's probably one. He's probably ready to play. And if he's if he's healthy and ready to go, I got to think that he he's probably you know nudging mm-hmm. nudging management and everything there right. and saying, hey, I'm ready to go. And I mean, I, I want I can't remember which top ten list it was, but he was listed one of the top ten shooters of all time. Mm-hmm. So. Which, I, I I disagreed with some of the picks on there, but mm-hmm. I mean, you're, they're they're talking to someone that's forgotten more or forgotten more sports than I know. So I, I mean, I I I would go as almost I'd go as far as Kevin Durant's a top ten player of all time. I mean, mm-hmm. top ten player. I mean, right. that's so that's he's fucking good. He 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 might work his way there with me when his career's done. Mm-hmm. But right now, I, I I can't put him that high. I can't well, I think he takes a lot. Though. He takes a lot of heat from 
you know, kind of joining the best. You know, yeah. he couldn't beat the best, so he joined him. And I think a lot of people, you know, including myself, mm-hmm. you know, gave him a hard time on that. But at, at, at the end of the day, I think it's safe to say, you know, possibly best player in the last five, six years. I think everybody would say LeBron. Mm-hmm. I mean, I, I don't think you can argue that, but Kevin Durant's right there. He's number two. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I mean, and then Giannis is coming up. Mm-hmm. And, you know, obviously won an MVP already. So, you know, that's, to me, he, to me, he, he's becoming more the most complete player in the NBA. Mm-hmm. The, only, the only hiccup in his game is the long-range shooting, mm-hmm. which this year had he's gotten improving. a lot better. Mm-hmm. A lot better. So... Let, you know, he he's always one of those players to keep an eye on. I like to watch him play just because of the way he plays. Mm-hmm. So he he's becoming you know him and uh, him and your boy Luca are mm-hmm. uh, two of the guys I really really enjoy watching now. And it's taken me a while to find my new guys after T- uh, Tim Duncan had retired. Mm-hmm. So I think I found my I found two of them right there. So, which I mean, I'm, it's nothing you know spec. I'm nothing you know unique. Mm-hmm. Everybody watches these guys, but. There's a lot of people that watch Duncan too, so because mm-hmm. Duncan was one of the best power forwards, probably their centers of all time. Oh, so, so it's it's not like I'm jumping, at, you know, starting a bandwagon. I'm not obviously jumping on it, but but yeah. So I, to me, like, the, like I said, the I'm glad the NBA is doing what they're doing. I might actually get into hockey because it's straight playoff hockey. Mm-hmm. I like playoff hockey. I always have, yeah. Yeah, it's. I, I did find it, uh, you know, there, there were some people clamoring on, like, well, where's the Red Wings? The fuck, are you kidding me? <laughs> I, I'm pretty sure the Red Wings were disqual like, uh, yeah. m- mathematically eliminated, like, two weeks before this whole mm-hmm. thing went down. So, calm down. And calm, you can and, say the same thing about the Pistons. They're yes. not, they will not be, they're, they're one of the eight no. teams that is no. not uh, not playing. You no, know, they, uh, they, they're not invited. They're not invited. <laughs> but, uh, you know, we got... Stevie Y in there with the, with the Red Wings. It's going to take time for him to get that team back to where he mm-hmm. wants it. Mm-hmm. Got got some young kids there that, you know, Dylan Larkin is one of the best players in the league. Mm-hmm. I think he's kind of overshadowed because the team fucking blows. Mm-hmm. But he'll get there, I'm sure. I, I've, I've, I watched him play the probably up until last year, probably like two years, his rookie year and the year after. The kid's great. Mm-hmm. The kid's great. Um, so the goal, goaltending there is kind of where – and that, but it, it was it was like that even for the last two or three years that they were playoff bound. Yeah, you know? and their their defense is so terrible that I mean yeah. I would that's probably the worst job in the NHL is being is being the goalie for that team because I mean you're gonna take probably 45 50 shots a game. Oh, the the, the wings are de- for the, the the last like four years every every time I turned on a red a Red Wings game they were being outshot like double mm-hmm. like 12 mm-hmm. to 24 and I'm like. Yeah, isn't the point in hockey? It, I mean, it, I guarantee there's some sweet science around it. I'm not. I've, I don't claim to be a hockey expert. I never have, and I never will. But if I'm a hockey coach or a hockey player, I'm going to throw the puck at the net as often as I can. Mm-hmm. Why? That's how you score. Mm-hmm. And if you're, you know, I'm, in, even watching these guys when it was uh, a power play, they, it seemed like they'd pass it for two fucking minutes and not take. They're looking for the perfect shot. Oh yeah, absolutely. Not for a yep. shot. Yep. Where that me. Was- Especially with something like that, throw it at the net, let it bounce off the goalie, and that's when shit happens. Mm-hmm. But no, they wouldn't do that. Mm-hmm. And, I mean, and now, you know, like I said, <clears throat> new, new management and everything. Give them mm-hmm. some time. Oh yeah, and like like you said at the beginning of that of all that is they're young, <coughs> they're a young team. So yeah, the, you know, super young. You talk about them being on a power play. They're trying to make something happen. They want to have the spectacular goal instead of that veteran. You know, outlook on things where we're going to put the puck in a position where we can score goals. Mm-hmm. Instead, you have this young version that's is going to come around. They're going to learn mm-hmm. the game, but right now they're young and they're trying to make everything you know the, that flashy goal or that spectacular goal that catches the highlights. You know, so they're yeah. coming. They're, they're coming around. I got to I mean, you you look at Stevie Wise track record. Mm-hmm. You got to think that given some time, you know, they're going to be you know that that normal Red Wing team that I think a lot of us are used to watching, especially going back to late 90s early 2000s yeah. and just his name alone is going to give him mm-hmm. as much time as he needs yep. to he's he's not someone they're going to run out mm-hmm. of town in five years i mean i i, I would i shouldn't say that. i would find it very shocking yeah. if they run him out of town after five years just because his track record with the team his name alone mm-hmm. and what he's meant to the organization even before this so 
Yeah, 2K crew. There, there's your fucking hockey right there, right there. <laughs> I think that's the first time we've ever done it. I, I uh, unless we were teasing something, yeah, yeah. And then the Pistons, I think they're just the Pistons. You know, I mean, I guess the only thing they got going for them is hopefully they can hit it in the the lottery and mm-hmm. and you know, obviously they're a team that's not invited, so I got to think that their odds are going to be yes. You know, you know, they got a good shot at. I think if you can get into that. Top three or four in the draft, I think you can't go wrong with, with three or four picks in that draft. Mm-hmm. The thing with the NBA is it's normally very, very top-heavy every draft you talk yes. about. You know, you have maybe three, four, for sure, you know, you know, game changers, and then you have a lot of guys that are kind of, you know, hit Four or miss. Players. Yeah, you, I mean, yeah. you never know. You might hit a hit a gem in the middle of the first round or in, even in the beginning of the second round. You just don't know, but you only have about three or four sure things that are, you know, face of a franchise – soon as you draft them so Mm. if they can hit it right in the in with the lottery maybe they can you know pull a guy like i don't know i know first off i know a lot of people were talking about lonzo ball fuck uh, Lonzo not lonzo ball but it's lamello ball fuck him uh, i I like that i like the top top and kid from dayton i really like him yes i he the the two or three games that i actually got to watch at dayton i was very impressed Mm -hmm. with him so yeah i'm definitely on that bandwagon uh, the, the the kid that from Memphis. Yes, yep. That uh, his name escapes you right now, but he only played a handful of mm-hmm. games, and uh, for some stupid fucking reason, the NCAA had to step in and say, "No, you're done. You're done." Yeah, imagine that. Yeah, that was stupid. That was stupid. But uh, one thing that uh, you and I kind of talked about uh, a couple nights ago is the we have the MLB draft coming up, and they're doing it remotely. You know, kind of mm-hmm. like the uh, kind of like the NFL did. Which um, they pushed it back, mm-hmm. which it, I didn't understand because the, the NFL draft is always before it. They pretty much showed you how to do it, mm-hmm. and then you push it back because you weren't sure how, how you're going to do it. Which it, it's fine. Obviously, the season hasn't started yeah. yet, and not, nine times out of ten, the kids that are drafted right now aren't going to play this year anyway. And so it's six of one, half dozen the other. I get that now, especially with not having a minor league season. What are these kids going to do, mm-hmm. you know? And, you know, Tigers have the number one pick. You know, there's a lot of folks that have been talking about where they should go, what should, what should they do. They have to get a bat. They you know, have to and get I'm, a bat. And I'm so torn. Um, obviously, you know, I, I'm a diehard Tigers fan. Everybody knows that. So I've obviously done my research on, on you know, who potential draft picks for them. And I think, you know, going back to – even last year's draft, I think as soon as that draft wrapped up, the you know kind of the obvious, oh he's going to be the first pick of the draft next year is uh, Spencer Spencer Torkelson, mm-hmm. first baseman from Arizona State, and at that time and and going all the way through, I was like, oh yeah, I mean it's perfect. The Tigers they need a first baseman, they need they need a bat. I mean and he plays right into that. He's a you know he's going to be a middle of the lineup guy on any team that he you know mm-hmm. that, that decides to take him. Not now, but in you know yeah. in the future and mm-hmm. th- give him three or four years. But then, you know, after doing more and more research, and then obviously I'm, I'm a Michigan fan, so I watched a lot of the College Baseball World Series, and Vanderbilt has a kid by the name of Austin Martin mm-hmm. who can play, you know. Anywhere. Yeah, play anywhere. I mean, you can, mm-hmm. if they need to, need be, they can, you know, move him to the, he could be an outfielder. He mm-hmm. can play basically anywhere in the infield except for pitcher and catcher. Now, the Tigers are so deep in the outfield, I don't see that, you know, that happening, but they need infield help. They mm-hmm. need that shortstop. They need a third base. I mean, they need everything in the infield. So... And I like a lot of the things that that kid can mm-hmm. do because he, you know, Torkelson. I don't think there's any question he's the best hitter in this draft. But Austin, but Martin's right there. I mean, you're talking about a kid that batted over 400, you know, in in the SEC, which is no slouch when it comes to baseball. College baseball World Series team, you know, and being able to play any position in the infield, bat like that, steal bases. He, I mean, he's he, he mm-hmm. does it all. I'm so torn. I don't know who I don't know who I would who I would want with that pick and. Uh, uh, fortunately for them, I don't think you can go wrong with either one. No, no I don't I, think you can go wrong with either one. I mean, there might be a where you look back and say, "Damn," but at the same time, no, I don't think you can go wrong with it. Like, yeah, it, and it's it, it's one of those you're going to be damned if you do or damned if you mm-hmm. don't. But I, I I don't think you I don't think either picks wrong. Mm. I would lead I would lean towards the Vandy kid just because a Vanderbilt's putting out studs every mm-hmm. fucking year. The pedigree of that program is amazing. His versatility, you know, where mm. whereas Torkelson, pretty he's much, he, he's it's, it's the only thing he can do. Mm. He's first baseman. You got a lot of 
a lot of different, you know, more like uh, would you take a Chris Bryant or an Anthony Rizzo, mm-hmm. where, you know, because the, the the stuff I re- I read about him is like, well, you know, he he plays pretty much the whole infield and and is an above average outfielder. Mm-hmm. I'm like, okay. First thing that I thought of was Chris Bryant and Joe Madden, mm-hmm. the way he, Joe Madden would use them all over the fucking place. And yeah, to, to me, that that's the only reason I would do it is because the Tigers have so many holes where I think first base is not as much of a priority mm-hmm. as all the other options. Mm-hmm. But if it's Torkelson's a no-brainer. I mean, yeah, you know? and, and, and the way I look at it, too, is I think that there's a lot of up-and-coming players coming up for the Tigers that mm-hmm. are that, that I think that they've... They've kind of went with that, you know, we want to get more versatile. We want to have guys that can play multiple positions. And I think that they have that coming up now. Mm-hmm. Now they might be another year or two away. And I know right. I keep on saying that for all you <laughs> Tigers fans. But I think that they have a lot of that. But what they don't have is that guy that you can punch in there. You know, that, that Miguel Cabrera that they had for years and years where you could punch him in the lineup every single day when he was healthy in mm-hmm. his prime. And you knew you were going to get 30-plus home runs out of him. And you knew he was going to hit over 100 mm-hmm. RBIs. And they don't have that with anybody that they have right. up and coming right now. And I think if you draft Tor- Torkelson, I think he gives you that right off the bat. He's a guy that has batted, you know, in the upper 300s his entire college career. He's, he's led college baseball he's a lefty, home runs. Right? Righty. He's a righty. Yep. Okay. He's led college baseball in home runs, you know, last last year. And I, th- I think in the year before that, he was in the top five. So he has the power. I think he's one of those guys. He's a plug-in guy that. Right off the bat, given given two or three years, you know, working his way up, mm-hmm. he's a guy that you can plug in, and he's going to get you, you know, thirty plus home, thirty plus home runs and a hundred plus RBIs, and I think that's what the Tigers need the most right now. I don't think the Tigers had a, someone hit thirty home runs last no. year. No, oh hell so. no, they, they were the bottom <laughs> bottom in the league in home runs. I mean, and and they addressed that this off season, mm-hmm. you know, and not like not not with the big the big sexy names. Obviously, mm-hmm. they weren't you know unloading the checkbook on you know big time players but on big time contracts but you bring in you bring over a cj crone mm-hmm. who you know with with the twins hit i think he ended up hitting like 27 28 home runs mm-hmm. last year and then also jonathan scope also coming over from the twins another I, you know i mid-20s like that to, uh, it, scope is a very underrated just mm-hmm. kind of under the radar player you can put him at second you can put him uh, maybe third and short but you know kind of that prototypical second baseman but with pop mm-hmm and if you remember in Baltimore, we were him and uh, Chris Davis, when Chris Davis wasn't sucking, mm-hmm. that was one of the most poppy right sides of the infield oh, in, yeah. in, in baseball. Yeah. But then again, they're they're the Orioles, sir. They're kind of flying. Oh, that for Chris Davis. Chris mm-hmm. Davis was crush Davis. <laughs> well, now it's suck Davis. Yeah. I wish I could get paid. I have more strikeouts and hits the last three <laughs> fucking years and still get paid. <laughs> fucking bum. But no, I I, I like the Jonathan. I've always been a fan of his. I thought he was very undervalued, and I think he, in a young team like this, he's going to get his shot. Mm-hmm. And they didn't overpay for him. No, so it, it works out for everybody. And I think you know he's one of those kind of not really outspoken veterans that can help the clubhouse chemistry together because there really wasn't, especially last year, there wasn't a whole lot of vet presence no. there. No, and the ones that were there. You know, Cabrera was hurt most of the year. Mm-hmm. Same, and, I mean, same thing can be said for, you know, and it's been probably the worst signing in, in, for the Tigers in the last 10 years is is talking about Zimmerman. Mm-hmm. But he wasn't even there for most of the no. season. I mean, he's been battling injuries for the entire time that he's been in Detroit. And that's why, you know, I can't necessarily give him a lot of shit for not performing since he's been a right. Tiger. He just hasn't been healthy. Mm-hmm. You know, because you go back to him being healthy and him with, with the Washington Nationals, he was the guy for Washington there for a lot of years. Oh, very, Strasburg very, got very there. good pitcher. Yes, very good pitcher. And even when Strasburg was there, he was the number two guy. And I mean, it was hard to find a better one-two punch than those two. And so, but since his time in Detroit, he just hasn't been healthy mm-hmm. and has. And it's been so it's been very frustrating to watch because obviously the product that he's that, that we've gotten out of him has been very very shitty. Yeah. Fortunately, yeah. this year is the last year we have to deal with that. <laughs> but uh, but going back to you know <laughs> you know bringing over you know. Crown or Crone and uh, Scope, yeah, yeah, it brought a lot more power to them, and I mean, it, I was excited for that. You know, obviously the Tigers were going to score more runs because they were going to be able to hit for more power than last. Mm-hmm. I still think that they were you were looking at, you know, bottom of the of the of the Central. It was going to be mm-hmm. between them and, and them and the Royals, but bring over some guys, be able to hit some home runs, be able to score, you know, score some runs, and give some of these young pitchers a chance because. Yeah. When you're only scoring one or two runs like a game like they were last year, and you have this young pitching staff, 
you're not going to win any baseball games. No. You've got to be able to have those yeah. games where you score six, seven runs and give these young pitchers a chance. Yeah, give them a, give them a chance to air shit out. Mm-hmm. Where they're because I, I guarantee you, if it's a one or two run game, they're pressing. They're trying to mm-hmm. you know spot every pitch instead of just fucking throw it and you know an actual pitch, mm-hmm. not just and just trying trying to make everything perfect. And you know as well as I do, when you try to do that, you you'll get everything but perfect. Yep. That's when your your breaking balls hang. Yep. That's when your fastballs don't tail, and they're, they go right down the middle of the yep. plate. And next thing you know, they're 400 feet away. That's what happens. Mm-hmm. And when you give these kids a chance with like a five or six run lead, and especially in their young career, when you're only expecting five, maybe six innings out of them, just throw, go out there and have fun yeah. and let it, let it loose. Mm-hmm. Let it loose. Let's see what you can do. Let's see what your ball can do, and we'll we'll see as, as a team you know, how much offense we can get you. Yep. And you know we a uh, group of us were talking about. Uh, Speaking of the, the young pitching, how great the young pitching is looking for the Tigers, and you know they were talking about you know, oh yeah this and this and blah blah blah, and I'm like yeah, and when and when Fulmer comes back next year, and they're like holy fuck, we forgot you completely forgot mm-hmm. about Michael Fulmer, which I think a lot of people did, mm-hmm. and you have him, you know just as a, if the season were to start right now, him, Boyd, um, Daniel Norris. Which Daniel Norris, I've always been a fan of his. He, I, 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 he's one of those kids that just hope and pray puts yeah. it together. Yeah. Because his makeup as a person, his competitiveness, his drive, it, it, he just needs that to get over that mm-hmm. hump. Just get mm-hmm. over that hump. And I, I think with Verlander, when it was there, he was trying to help him get past mm-hmm. that because he saw how great he could be too. And then the Casey Mises of the world are still just waiting in the wings mm-hmm. and. You know, there there's a there's a lot of firepower there that could be used for trade bait, could oh, be yeah. used to bring out you know, it's just when and where mm-hmm. is all of this going to come together and if you do keep all of them, which one ends up in the bullpen? Where does that leave them? Mm-hmm. Um or you know, like Boyd was being shopped last year. Yeah. Or and, that, and I think that Boyd's gonna be in he's gonna be in the in the trade talks again mm-hmm. this year, depending on if they have a season. Um and he gets off to a really good start. I mean he was he was in the top of the league last last year in strikeouts, which is and, shocking. You know, to me. Yeah, to a left-handed pitcher that throws you know barely over ninety, but mm-hmm. he had, but he has a very very good breaking ball, mm-hmm. and you know he keeps a lot of batters you know off balance. His biggest problem is he gives up the home run ball. Yep. You know he gives up way too many home runs, and that's and normally that's that's what gets him. I mean he you, you look at his you know his his line at when the game's over, and you you look at it and he's got nine ten strikeouts and he's only given up four hits, and but he's given up six runs. Mm-hmm. It's because he walks two or three batters and he gives up two or three home runs every single time mm-hmm. he pitches, and it's and that's that's the frustrating part about it. Yeah. But then you watch him the next game, and he has that same line, but he only gives up one run because mm-hmm. he just he he was able to avoid the walks and avoid mm-hmm. giving up the home run ball, mm-hmm. and that's been the biggest thing with him. But if he comes out and pitches like he did at the beginning of the season, and you're looking at you know their po- you know the possibility of a short season this year, so mm-hmm. obviously that trade deadline is going to come sooner. Right, because he kind of the wheels started to spin a little bit on him, you know, towards the when it got to the end of the season when the trade deadline came mm-hmm. around. If you have a shorter season this year and he pitches the way he did at the beginning, he's, he's you know he's still got two more years on his contract, you know, and a very very you know club friendly co- contract oh, that yes. he has there. Oh, yeah. I think he's going to be a guy that you can shop, and I think they might be able to land something decent out of that. Yeah, and especially knowing that your your cupboard's full, mm-hmm. you know, you you've got arms for days, yeah. and not just arms, quality mm-hmm. arms. I mean, there, there are a lot of people wanting Casey Mize up last year. Oh, yeah. Which, competitively, yeah, he could do it. Oh, absolutely. I mean, he proved but, that just in the spring watching him. And I know it's just spring training, mm-hmm. but watching him pitch. And, I mean, obviously the Tigers have some very, very good pitching prospects coming up. But And so there were a lot of games this spring watching him, and then there would also be two or three of these other prospects mixed in. There's a difference between watching Casey Mize and watching mm-hmm. these other prospects, and I know that they're very, they're all, they're high on all of them. Mm-hmm. But Casey Mize is like, it's like watching a veteran, yeah, you know, out there doing his thing. I mean, it was like it's, it's almost like watching a very young version of Verlander. And I know that they're, you know, different pitchers. It's but, almost like when when, when Strasburg came up. Yes, yes, he mm-hmm. just he, he just he already knew how to pitch. You know, mm-hmm. from the day that he was drafted, he knew how to pitch, and that's the one thing that you know at the high school level and the college level, these kids can get away with. Just being able to throw because they can you. overpower. They can yeah. overpower you. But when you get to the MLB game, you got to know how to pitch. You mm-hmm. got to know how to strategically get yourself through. You know, especially being a starting pitcher. You know, you, 
you come out of the bullpen and you got to roll this Chapman 103 in your be- in your left pocket, you know. Okay, yeah. you can probably overpower these guys, but when you when you're a starter and you got to do this, Devers, <laughs> yeah, when you got to <laughs> when you got to do this for six seven innings, though, you got to learn how to two, pitch two or three times around mm. three four, three or four times around yep. the lineup. Yep. You know, that's when that's when the starting pitchers make their money. Mm-hmm. It's not in the first inning. Yep. It's not in the second inning. It's that second and third time through, and even fourth time, because you have to adapt because the the batters are going to adapt. Mm-hmm. They're going to come up, you know, with their their approach the first time around. If you get, if you strike them out looking and they, they look fucking silly, they're going to go back to the dugout, go watch the tape, and be like, all right, well, his tendencies are this, this, mm-hmm. and this, and you can't, you better not do yeah. that again because they're fucking professional hitters. Yeah. They're going to pick up on that shit, and you know, just like I mentioned, Strasburg coming up, his first game as a pro was against, granted, it was against the Pirates, Cade fourteen. Mm-hmm. Why? Because a he had four pitches that are above average. Yeah. But he knew when and when and where to throw him, mm-hmm. and you know th- th- this would be something if if Mize would have come up, you know, kind of like Verlander did. Verlander had Pudge. Mm-hmm. I'm sure that helped him help oh, the young JV out absolutely. a lot. Absolutely, and to, to not have that, you know, vet presence, at a, you know, especially that's high, that highly touted as a catcher. I think if there was that presence there, you know, kind of like a. You know, like, like a Veritek or a Pudge or mm-hmm. you know, any of those guys. It that you you might have seen him up last mm-hmm. year just to mm-hmm. get his feet wet. You know, give him that security blanket, if you will. But the Tigers don't have that. You know, vet vet personality or anything yeah. behind the plate. And you know, and that that gets me back to the, you know talking about Crone and Scope coming over. The Tigers made the move to bring Austin Romine over as a mm-hmm. catcher. Yeah. And I get it. He's not the big catching name that you that you know you want to hear. But he he was a catcher backup catcher for a lot of years for mm-hmm. the Yankees. Yeah. And dealt with a lot of, you know, really really good pitchers. Almost and, fought Cabrera. Yeah. Yes. That was pretty cool. <laughs> but 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 it gives a, it finally it gives them a veteran because mm-hmm. they've tried yeah. they've they've tried with these younger catchers. And I think Romine being in the same room as guys like Jake Rogers. Jake Rogers yeah. was the catcher that they called up last season. He's you know the one that they I think he's the one that potentially they want to take the job here. Who's the, in the tall next one? year or two? Griner. I was like Gar- Griner. I was like Gardner the Gardner didn't sound right. But yeah, they, it might be what those guys need too. Yes. You know, it's it, it'd be like having you know Three rookies in a quarterback room. Yeah, get in the it, NFL. And, Are you fucking kidding me? Yeah, so bring a bring a guy in that has caught for you know CC Sabathia mm-hmm. over the last few years, and yeah. a, you know Severino, and you know uh, Garrett Cole just went over there now, so obviously didn't catch for him. But right. you know you, you get you get what I'm saying. He's, mm-hmm. he's caught for some bigger names than obviously you know some of these pitchers that right. you know the Tigers have. And you know they have some young kids coming up, but they're not proven names yet. Right. So get a get a catcher that has caught for some. You know some veterans. You know CC Sabathia, in my opinion, is a Hall of Fame pitcher. So mm-hmm. you know he and so he Romine's Romine was the catcher every single time that Sabathia pitched. You know yeah. that was who he wanted. So getting a getting a veteran there, he's probably not going to be you know a guy that's going to hit hit for a lot of power or even no. hit for any average. But he gets sneaky, like opportunistic hits. Yeah, he he's not going to hit a you know grand slam to win you the game. But he'll he'll hit you a a little seeing eye single that starts a fucking rally. That leads to someone mm-hmm. else hitting the grand slam. Mm-hmm. So, very op- opportunistic hitter. I do think it would, would be kind of cool if him and his brother were on the same team. Mm-hmm. I think that'd be pretty cool. But obviously, the other role mine isn't there no. anymore, which makes my autograph role mine baseball look really <laughs> cool. But uh, and yes, I actually do have a role mine autograph baseball. That's another story for another show. But but uh, yeah, no, I, I I agree. I mean, it's it's not. It's not. It's not a sexy signing. No, but it's. It has a purpose. It's. It's a veteran. You know that you put in there, and, I, and I'm. I'm a firm believer that you need to have a veteran catcher Absolutely. on every single team. 100%. You have to have it. Whether he's your. Whether he's your go-to everyday catcher, or he's just your backup that maybe catches once or twice a he, week. Even if they brought Avila back, yes. I wouldn't be mad. Yes, Avila was a great game caller. Was he? Was he? Uh, he's an all right hitter. Mm-hmm. But you're not signing a catcher. There's only like three catchers in the whole league mm-hmm. that bat over 300. Yep. I'm sorry. And, but I, I, I would, I, I was happy with Avila. He was, a, especially, I mean, he caught a lot of big games for Scherzer, for Verlander, all those cats. Mm-hmm. And I mean, he batched at 240, which isn't horrible. No. Is it, is it what you're, you know, like I said, there's only a certain many, a certain amount of guys in the league that can hit for 300. Yeah. And, 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 and call an amazing game. And hell, it, 
Yachty. If, if Yachty ever yeah. left St. Louis, I'd have him as, mm-hmm. as a Tiger in a heartbeat. Are you kidding me? And that's the thing with Avila. You know, a lot of people gave him, gave him shit, you know, and including myself. I got mm-hmm. frustrated with him, too. I mean, shit, well, you were looking at a Tigers team that maybe had one hole in their entire batting lineup, and it was him. But so you, he was going to catch it all the time. You look at his first year, like his first real year, oh, he yeah, came his, up. His all star season. Made the all star yeah. game. Like, fuck, this yeah. is the. Yeah. This, this is not this is the GM's mm-hmm. kid, and he's pretty badass. Yeah. And then that he just like forgot how to hit, mm-hmm. which is, and then at, at, he went to the White Sox. Every time he played the Tigers, he used to get big hits. <laughs> James McCann, where does he go? The White Sox plays the Tigers, gets big hits, yeah. and it's like you fuck sticks. What the hell's your man? <laughs> God damn! And I, I I was a big James McCann fan too. You know, I I really was too. I guess I I still look at that and I don't really understand why why they let him why they let him go. I mean, he was still young. It wasn't mm-hmm. like it was wasn't like he had a you know a contract that was no you know. I think they, I think they had high, higher hopes on Grayson Griner, to be honest yeah, with you. Yeah, yeah, and, and which t- you know he's still very young. He's, I'm not, I'm not gonna say mm-hmm. we're, not, we're not saying he's a bum by mm-hmm. any means. He just hasn't put it together yet. No, no. And for and, and then when they made the trade with you know with the Verlander trade and they brought over Jake Rogers from mm-hmm. Houston, I think he was kind of their next. And I and I think that he is the leader in the clubhouse to be the guy um, behind Romine this year. And I think and and hopefully that's what he needs. I mean, mm-hmm. you look at these young catchers that they've had for the last few years. They really haven't had anybody to, mm. you know, kind of sh- pave the way, show show them right. the ropes. It's all been every single season going into every year. It's been like, okay, who's going to be the fucking catcher this year? Like, mm-hmm. who's going to step up? Instead, now I think you know this year, Romine's the guy. He's going to be the starting catcher. And then which one of these young guys is going to be, you know, who's going to step up and be that backup right. and then eventually step up in, a, in another year or two and be the guy? So and, You know, you, you look at Griner, too. As big as he is, he's six foot fucking eight. Yeah. I think maybe you know if, if he actually comes on his own and start hit starts mm-hmm. hitting, move his ass to first base. Yeah, I'd, I'd much rather have a six foot eight first baseman than a six foot eight catcher. <laughs> yeah. There's not too many. Uh, granted, he's he's the only six foot eight catcher walking mm-hmm. around, but I need to you know six foot eight. If you're that mm-hmm. agile to play catcher, mm-hmm. you can play first base. Yeah, and he's very good defensively. It's yeah. it's him is. I mean, he just can't hit. He can't hit. He has not proven. Mm-hmm. He has not proven at any level that he can really hit, and that's the one thing. I He looks say. uncomfortable in the box every mm-hmm. time I see him. Mm-hmm. He looks uncomfortable when he does make contact. It's all unorthodox, and it, it's like his. It's like you know when, especially like with you in high school. There's a kid that has 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 grown, but he hasn't grown into mm-hmm. his body yet. Mm-hmm. So everything looks kind of out of sync. Yeah. That's yeah. almost what it's like. Yeah. <coughs> Excuse me. That, that's almost what it's like with him because. Behind the plate, he's beautiful, mm-hmm. which to me, it, I, I think it would be the other way yeah, around. Yeah, when you're trying to move something that big, that quick, on that short a reaction time, would be more detrimental, and you'd be a better hitter. Because mm-hmm. to, to me, that would for it, for me, catching would be the hardest part of the game. Okay. Hitting would be the easiest part. And he's the other way around. Mm-hmm. And it, he did, like I said, he, he looks like a kid that everything hasn't come. Like he just had a growth spurt, and everything mm-hmm. hasn't come together mm-hmm. yet. So. Like I said, I'm, I'm definitely not bailing on him. I love the kid a lot, um, but maybe a move to the first base in his future, possibly. Yeah. And I mean, yeah, and and he, I, and I he see, had to know that was coming. Yeah, too. and I see the odds of that happening more too, just because I really like the Rogers kid. I think mm-hmm. that he's um, he he I, well defensively, he's he's their best. I mean, he's the best. He has the best arm out of all of them. I mean, hands down. And even at the plate, I mean. If he can cut down on strikeouts, make a little bit more contact, he he has proven that he is a guy that can hit twenty plus home runs. Mm-hmm. You know he's done that at the minor league level. Now it's just a matter of being able to carry this over and do do this at the at the major league level. Right. And for some guys, for some guys that just never happens. But I think mm-hmm. with him, he's still young, still has some time. I, I I see a lot of potential in him. I see I see the most potential in him when it comes mm-hmm. to you know the catcher of the future. Right. So that's where I'm kind of leaning at right now, but. We'll see. Yeah, and hopefully, like I said, we'll get to see some games this year. Like I said, I'm. If it's a fifty game season, am, am I going to watch? You damn right. I'm oh, absolutely. Watch. I'm going to watch anyway. Yeah. But to me, that's it's a dick tease, mm-hmm. and I'm going to end up with blue balls at the end of the end <laughs> of the season, even though that's a World Series champion. Which to me, if you're only if you're only playing fifty games, this would be. The quarantine team. Oh, absolutely. I mean, I think the first team that kind of pops up to me in this conversation is the Dodgers. I got to mm-hmm. think that the Dodgers are the favorite to win it all. To me, they're the best team in baseball going into this season. 
And they've been so fucking close. Yep. So fucking close for what three years now? Yeah. Yeah. And then if they were so if they were finally to have a shortened season and you know just throwing a ballpark out there fifty game season and they won that World Series like. I, don't, I would rather just not even win anything if yeah. I was in their shoes. Like we've been so close to winning, to winning it, and now we won this. You know, this is this this is almost worse than a than a fucking Houston Astros World Series back in you know 2017. I was, I was just gonna say, you know, that you know the the same Dodgers team got beat by the the Astros, the Bangers, and then the Red Sox the next year, or those is, is the Cubs, the yeah, I, I was right, yeah. Um, so yeah, you you had the trash can beaters, and then everyone says the Red Sox. Yeah, but I what? think it's safe to say that they weren't doing anything remotely close no. to what Houston no. was doing. And, and if you look at the run differential between anybody, yeah, oh I my mean, God, they were killing that it. Was, I mean, that, 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 uh, that was arguably one of the best Red Sox teams in the history. It was of baseball. arguably one of the best teams ever assembled in yeah. all of baseball. Yeah. So I, I don't don't come at me with this cheating bullshit. <laughs> and on top of that, speaking of that, if there is no season. Astros can bring their manager back. Mm. Red Sox can bring their manager back. It's not games, folks. Mm. It's a it's 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 a calendar. Mm-hmm. So yeah, I would take him back. No, oh, absolutely. I mean, Alex Cora, fuck yeah! Are you kidding me? Especially I'll, I'll take with, him back. with with what's come out now. I think I think now go back. You know, kind of rewind. You know, four months ago, and I don't know if it was exactly four months ago, but when we had that first conversation, mm-hmm. when we didn't necessarily the news broke about Houston. And the news broke about Alex Cora, but we didn't mm-hmm. necessarily know what exactly happened in Boston. But now, so at the time, I was like, well, there's no chance this motherfucker's ever stepping foot back in, yeah. you know, a dugout ever, you mm-hmm. know, not even at a fucking junior college league, right. you know, is, he's never going to step foot anywhere. And now I look at it and I'm like, he's going to be back. Whether right. it's Boston that brings him back, somebody's going to bring him back because he was, you talk about young, these young managers, and that's what everybody in baseball mm-hmm. wants now is they want to go young. They want to go with a young manager. He's, you know, maybe the best out of all of them. He might be the oh, best yeah. option of all of them. But I, I, I think the reason the Red Sox waited so long to keep the, you know, kind of manager in retainer, whatever they mm-hmm. want to call it, um, with Renicky is to see what comes of this Alex Correa situation. Absolutely. Now, I think Renicky would be the first one if they're if they're like, hey, you know, Alex wants to come back. He'd be like, fine, fuck it. I, I really didn't want to be the manager anyway, to be yeah, honest with you. Yeah. And and you go back to when 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 Boston and him and when they parted ways, mm-hmm. it wasn't that Boston fired him. It no. was that they they had a conversation mutually. Agreed. So what happened in this conversation? Yeah. Okay, we're gonna we're gonna hear things out mm-hmm. and figure out what they come up with, mm-hmm. but we're not gonna just you know. There's a good chance, Alex. You know, give it. A, well, let's go. Let's give it a year, and, what's, no. and we're gonna well, let's have a conversation again. Yeah. And yeah. And I th- and, and I think that the, there's, he's Boston's not going to be the only team having a, a conversation with him again. No, but I, I have a feeling that he knows those players. He knows he. If the organization stood behind him for that long, he it'd be a smack in the face to the Red Sox mm-hmm. if he didn't come back. Mm-hmm. Or I mean, if, if someone offered him fifty million dollars a year. Yeah, fuck yeah, go ahead, mm-hmm. go ahead. But yeah, they th- looking back at both of them, you know, Hinch for the Astros has a whole lot more axes to bury mm-hmm. than than Cora does. Mm-hmm. Hinch knew about it. He broke monitors. He told him to fucking stop. Mm-hmm. So that I don't. If if either one has a has a likelihood to come back, I think it's Cora rather mm-hmm. than Hinch. But I think it, they're both coming back. Oh, they're they're both going back. He's, Absolutely, he's going back to Houston. He's going back to the Boston. Hands down. I mean, I'm a hands down. I'm a I'm a Tigers fan, and I'm I mean, and don't get me wrong, I love Garden Iron. Mm-hmm. When they made that hire, he was the bridge to mm-hmm. get these young guys that were never going to you know compete for any type of a World Series or never going they were never going to compete for a playoff spot. Mm-hmm. And he was that guy that was that is just going to fill that spot. He's going to be that bridge. And that's where he's at in his career. I don't think he's no. the type of manager now that's that you're going to see jump on to a, you know, to a powerhouse team and make a run for it. I I I I, I, I even question how many more years he has left. I, th- I, I think the reason he came back was he wanted to teach the young kids. Yeah, you absolutely, know, and that he's great at that. Look, look at Minnesota absolutely. for all those fucking absolutely. years. Are you kidding me? Uh, but yeah, they. I, I think he's the perfect. Like you mm-hmm. said, perfect bridge. Now, 
I want the Tigers to talk to AJ Hinch. I want the Tigers yeah. to talk to Cora. I want that conversation. Hey, we get through this season. Just because your players, quote unquote, well, the, the Astros cheated the fuck out of everything. Oh, no, absolutely. It, that does not take away from your managerial style, your how you manage, and your effectiveness. Mm-hmm. Does it does it mess with your win loss? Yes, mm-hmm. but beating on trash cans doesn't doesn't make up for bad bullpen moves or bad starting mm-hmm. pitching moves or bad managerial moves. Can it cover up some of the some of the rough spots? Sure, but Hinch did it long enough to know that his track record. Even leading up to this, his pedigree was good. Mm-hmm. So just because this happened, yeah. what, what, will it be something on his? Will it be follow him? Follow him around the rest of his career? Sure, yeah, but you yeah. know what? After the first couple of years, every, no one's going to give know. it some time, and it's going to go away. Yeah. You know, and, and and not not. I don't want anybody to think that I'm condoning anything that he did no. or anything like no. that. But I th- he, it was a tough situation. You know, you're talking about a young manager that's you know came into a job where. This team's gonna. We're gonna compete. We're gonna. We're gonna. We we're, we should be the best team in baseball. We're gonna. Yeah. We want to win. And right. then you bring on who I think, after all these investigations went on and, and all the information that we have, you know, us as fans have, I think Carlos Beltran was. Oh yeah. Was the the head of all this. Mm-hmm. So you have Beltran, who is a proven veteran, on that ball Got team. Got fired by the by, fired from the Mets by himself. Yeah. I mean, do you do you as a fan really think that these the young players were listening to AJ Hinch more than they were listening to, to uh, Beltran. I'm listening. Fuck no, as, as a young kid, I'm listening to that dude that's going to have HOF behind. Yes, his name. exactly. Are you kidding me? Yeah, exactly. So yeah. you're coming up in. I mean, you, in baseball, you have you have a you have a a relationship with with your manager, obviously. But when you have a veteran like a, like a Carlos Beltran who's mm-hmm. been everywhere, you know. You're going to listen to that guy. You're going to latch on to what he has going on. And I think it's safe to say that he was the, you know, the mastermind behind mm-hmm. all of this. Yep. And these young kids just latched on to that. You know, like, hey, this is working. We're winning. <coughs> Everything is good right now. Let's listen to this motherfucker. And I think that's, that's what happened. And I think for A.J. Hinch, he was, he's a young manager. Mm-hmm. And he's trying to make a name for himself. And he's fucking winning. Yeah. And... You have a you have a guy like Carlos Beltran. Like, who are you gonna have? You gonna pull Beltran into your office and be like, "Hey, you gotta stop. You're cheating. gonna ax this shit, or we're getting rid of you." Like, yeah. you can't. You're, you can't. Like, no. you try to have that fucking conversation. Yeah. So it's, it's not happening. I'm not. I'm not, happening. I'm not at all saying that AJ Hinch is not wrong for anything because he is. Mm-hmm. He is, and he deserved to have this year off. Yeah. Yep. Not arguing that one bit, but he also deserves to have another chance. Absolutely. And he also agree. deserves to have an opportunity to put this behind him. All these fucking players that were right in the middle of it all, they're all getting another chance. Hell, they didn't get anything but a slap on the wrist. Well, yet. Yet. yeah. Yeah. I, I have a feeling. I, I don't care what the uh, what the what the punishment from Major League Baseball is. You're going to see these these Strohs players wearing a lot of baseballs right in the middle of their back, and rightfully so. And it's not going to be long. And Mr. Ludnow is going to have a fucking job as a GM mm-hmm. also again because yeah. what he did as far as the quote-unquote tank, what he did, and he tanked, he tanked worse than probably any professional sports team has ever tanked in the history of sports. Mm-hmm. But look what, it, look what it did in the long yeah. run, in the big picture of things, maybe arguably the best job of a GM in all of sports ever. Mm-hmm. So Yeah. Yep. It, it, uh, it's going to be exciting. I, I look at it as the Tigers. Like if we could get rid of... If Alex Avila or Al Avila was is fucking gone mm-hmm. as a GM, because I just don't think that he's really done anything in his time that's you know great. No, no. obviously he was kind of dealt a pretty shit hand because Dombrowski, Dombrowski left did him high and dry with nothing, up, yeah. and Dombrowski left a lot of fucked up shit yes. in Boston too. Yes. So, but so he he really wasn't given that you know that great shot, but he really hasn't done a whole lot either to prove to me like that he can that he's the guy for it so he's been very conservative and then like i said garden Iyer, i think is that bridge is that bridge to you know when the tigers get back to competing they're gonna i think the tigers are gonna jump on to just like they just mm-hmm. like every other team is trying to do let's go with this younger manager let's bring more energy to it and you know we have all these young kids coming up let's bring energy with it I'll take Hinch and Ludnow as my com- yeah. as my combo in Detroit, and like, let's yeah. fucking do it. Yeah, just as long as there's no trash cans around <laughs> or a- Adrian Beltrans. Well, two case, man. This hour kind of flew by. To mm-hmm. be honest with you, we had zero script, no <laughs> fucking topics. The only thing is, I was like, look up to see when the uh, NBA season starts. So <laughs> we've done it again. We've reached that hour mark, ladies and gentlemen. If you hung in this long, you're probably hungry. 
So how about you uh, look up uh, Drop Anchor Tavern 269 Six four six two five two five. Look up on look up on Facebook. Drop Anchor Tavern. Look at their menu. Give them a holler. And you know what? They're actually opening on Friday. What's the date on Friday? The twelfth. Yes, I think you're correct. Yes. Friday the twelfth. They're opening up. They're staying open till ten o'clock. And I want to say on for Thursday, Friday, and Saturdays they're going to be open uh, from four o'clock until ten, I believe. So. If you want to get out and patronize, that's awesome. Just tell them Turbo and 2K sent you. 2K, any last words, my friend? No. I, I'm be, getting back to Drop Anchor. I look forward to seeing some people that I haven't seen yes, in, uh, yes. in, what, two, two and a half months now? It's, Jesus, it seems like it's been a fucking year. Yeah. It, but I'm just, I, I am so ready to. I'm ready for a fucking draft beer. Yeah. <laughs> yeah I hear you there. Just the, in the coldest mug possible, the biggest mug possible. Hell, give me, give me, give me a, just let me, let me drink it right out of the tap. <laughs> I'll be happy. I'll be happy. Well, 2K crew, we'll get you out of here on this. Have a great week. We will catch you next week in Jim Rome. Oh, before that, welcome back to the studio, my friend. Absolutely. It's good to have you back. Good to be back. All right, with Jim Rome. Now, now that we're both back, we're definitely fucking coming for you. <laughs>